Howdy everybody, David here, and this is another Dungeons & Dragons 5th Edition Mechanics Tutorial. In this particular tutorial, we are going to discuss the optional actions that are in the Dungeon Master's Guide Core Rulebook on page 271 and 272. Now, we've already gone over the standard actions from the attack action, spell casting, all the way to improvising and using an object. Now the Dungeon Master Guide elaborates and adds more, and there are six more that you can add into your Dungeons & Dragons 5th Edition game. You can add one, you can add two, hey, you can even add all of them if you want to. So what we're going to do in this video is take a look at all six of these optional standard actions. Now the first one is climb onto a bigger creature. So if one creature wants to jump onto another creature, it can do so by grappling. How cool is that? You can literally jump on something and attack it. You can ride around on it. I think that's great. So a smaller medium creature has little chance of making a successful grapple against a huge or gargantuan creature, or even probably even no chance. However, unless uh, that creature is using magic, maybe that, that might give the, the grappler supernatural might, but in most cases, probably not. Magic is pretty rare in D&D 5e. So as an alternative, a suitably large opponent can be treated as terrain for the purpose of jumping onto its back or climbing to a limb. So after making any ability checks necessary to get into position and onto the larger creature, the smaller creature uses its action to make a strength athletics or dexterity acrobatics check, which would then be contested by the target that you're trying to climb up to or grapple onto, uh, its dexterity acrobatics check. Now, if you win the target, if you, I'm sorry, if you win the contest, then you will successfully move into the target's creature's space and you will cling to its body. Now, while the target's, while you're in the target space, and if it's a huge or gargantuan creature, it will cover quite a few square grids if you're using a virtual tabletop map, or if you're using a mat around the table, or if you're doing theater of mine, you can just imagine how big an adult dragon is, uh, an ancient dragon, a purple worm, or maybe the Tarrasque is. So that's to give you a little bit of uh, a mental image of how big these creatures are that you're trying to you know, grapple and get onto. Really cool. So while you're in this target space, you are going to move with the target and you will have advantage on attack rolls against the target that you've climbed up to, climbed up on. I think that's actually really good. Now the smaller creature can move around within the larger creature's space, treating the space as difficult terrain, probably because of the movement of the creature. So instead of doing acrobatics checks upon acrobatics checks, then you're just going to have to treat it as difficult terrain and basically add another foot of movement on, which is no big deal at all. So the larger creature's ability to attack the smaller creature depends on the smaller creature's location and is left to your dungeon master's discretion. So the larger creature can dislodge the smaller creature as an action by maybe shaking it, trying to knock it off, scraping it against a wall. Ooh, that would actually hurt if you were a gnome. Uh, or maybe grabbing it and throwing it, you know, throwing you off of it. Now that larger creature, that huge or gargantuan creature, is going to need to make a strength athletics check contested by your strength athletics or dexterity acrobatics whatever which would be higher. And then the smaller creature, you know, you choose what ability to use, the contest is rolled, and you could be thrown off if the larger creature is more successful in his role than your role. So that's something then you're going to probably have to worry about taking fall damage and, and all that other good stuff. So it's something that you really need to uh, uh, think about when you're climbing onto a Tarrasque. <laughs> so the next optional action in the Dungeon Master's Guide on page 271, 272 is Disarm. I really like Disarm. This is where a creature can use a weapon attack to knock a weapon or another item from a target's grasp. And another item could possibly be that maybe the creature is fixing to drink a potion on its next turn and you could possibly knock that potion out of its hand. So, you the attacker 
you're going to make an attack roll contested by the target strength athletics check or dexterity acrobatics check. So your normal attack versus the, you know, the, the contest of the target strength athletics or dexterity acrobatics, whatever's higher. So if you are successful and you win the contest, then the attack causes no damage or any other ill effect or condition and the defender will drop the item that it's holding, whether it's a weapon, a vial, a scroll, whatever. Now, the attacker is going to have disadvantage on its attack roll if the target is holding the item with two or more hands. So if it's grasping onto it, maybe using a, a, a two-handed maul, uh, a great sword, a, a great axe, then take into consideration your roll is going to be with disadvantage against its normal roll. Now, the target is going to have advantage on its ability check if it is larger than the attacking creature or disadvantage if it is smaller. So pretty straightforward. No need to go into anything there. That's disarm. I actually really like disarm. I'm glad they added that as an optional uh, action. Now the next thing is mark. And this is where it gives you an option to make it easier for melee combatants to harry each other with opportunity attacks. Now, when a creature makes a melee attack, it can also claim it's marking the target. And all you're going to say is, you know, DM he or she, hey DM, I'm marking the target also. So, until the end of the attacker's next turn, any opportunity attacks that it makes against the marked target has advantage. Really nice. In case you don't know what advantage is, Roll a d20 twice, take the highest result, add in your modifiers. There you go. It's win-win. Advantage is really good. Now, if you do get a chance to take the opportunity attack, then that means that it does not expend your reaction, which is really nice because an opportunity attack usually takes a reaction, and you only get one reaction per round. So when the target's marked, you take an attack of opportunity attacks against that target, you do not lose your reaction. So, but the attacker can't make the attack, if anything, such as the incapacitated condition, or if it has shocking grasp spell, you know, which is preventing it from taking reactions. So that's the only way you're not going to be able to do this. Now, when you do take that, if you are able to take that opportunity attack, you don't expend your reaction, but Mark still states that you can only take one opportunity action per turn, and I like that. So you're probably saying, well, then why even negate using my reaction in the first place? What does that benefit? Well, there's a lot of benefits to that. You know, if you're multi-classing, if you're a mage, then you can still use your reaction to cast shield. Maybe if you want to hold an action when it comes to your turn, it's going to take a reaction to actually trigger your reaction. So, I mean, hey, there's a lot of benefits to this mark. I really like it, and I think it should be used in games. The next one is Overrun. Now, Overrun is when a creature tries to move through a hostile creature's space. Usually, you cannot move through a creature's space. But with this new Overrun standard action, it's basically, you know, it's, it's solved that gray area of, of confusion between players and Dungeon Masters. And I'm really glad that they added Overrun into the game really nice. Now the mover can try to force its way through by overrunning the hostile creature. I love it. So as an action or a bonus action, I like how you can use either an action or a bonus action. Because if you use your action uh, you know, as an attack, then you're not going to be able to you know, overrun. But seeing that it's labeled with a bonus or action, you can do both, which is really nice. So there's going to be a contest involved when you're trying to overrun. So it's basically going to be a roll-off with your strength athletics versus the hostile creature that you're trying to overrun versus its strength athletics check. The, you know, the creature that has the highest roll is successful. So the creature attempting the overrun has advantage on the check if it is larger than the hostile creature that it's trying to overrun. Now, if you are smaller than the creature that you're trying to overrun, you're going to have disadvantage, so it works the opposite way as well. So take that into consideration. You know, when you try to 
overrun that Tarrasque? I, I would think probably twice about that. <laughs> if the mover wins the contest, it can move through the hostile creature's space once this turn. And in fact, I would probably not even allow a creature to try to overrun a Tarrasque. I, I was just kind of being funny on that. But uh, yeah, if, if, if a creature is like larger than you, maybe a, maybe a larger dragon, uh, or maybe an ogre or a troll, I could see Overrun being really effective. Now let's talk about the next one, Shove Aside. Now remember, in the player's handbook, there is Shove, and Shove takes your attack standard action. Now Shove Aside just kind of builds on top of Shove, but Shove Aside, there's a lot of penalties to this. There, there's a huge penalty to this, and we're going to get into this now. So with this Shove Aside option, you're going to have a special shove that goes on top of what we just talked about uh, where you're going to force a target to the side because if you use the, the regular shove action you push the target back you know when you push a target it's back five feet now when you're shoving aside you can literally shove the creature you can grab it and shove it any which way so we're we're thinking here if it's theater of mind you would literally shove it to any position that's in within reach of you all right reach or adjacent now if you're looking at it on a battle grid then it would be one square away from where its position currently is really nice so of course uh there's going to be uh you know you're going to have disadvantage on your strength athletics check when you do this because there is a contest involved so whenever you do the regular shove there's no disadvantage but whenever you want to shove aside your check your strength athletics check will have disadvantage on that check so that's really something to think about disadvantage in D&D &D 5e in case you do not know is two rolls and you have to take the lowest roll so if you roll an 8 and a 20 the 20 is negated and you have to take the 8 so, if the check is successful, if you beat disadvantage, then the attacker can move the target five feet to position other, you know, within its reach still. Straightforward. Now, tumble. Tumble is really nice. I'm glad that they added this in also. Tumble is where a creature can try to tumble through a hostile creature's space, ducking and weaving past the opponent. As an action or a bonus action, the tumbler makes a dexterity acrobatics check contested by the hostile creature's dexterity acrobatics check that it's trying to tumble through its space. Now, you'll both have your roll off and whoever's the higher roller wins. Now, if you, the tumbler, wins, if you win the contest, then you can move through the hostile creature's space once on this turn. Straightforward. No need to go into it it any deeper than that. So I really like these six optional actions uh, that the Dungeon Master's Guide added in. And once again you can find these on page 271 and 272 of the core DMG for D&D 5e. So I hope you guys uh, enjoyed this video. Kind of broke it down for you guys a little bit. Please feel free to leave a comment down below. If you enjoy what you're seeing, please subscribe to the YouTube channel. And if you need any Dungeons & Dragons 5th Edition character sheets, I have over 840 pre-made character sheets on my website, tabletopping.net. There will be a link down below. They're all on nice, beautiful three-page PDFs. You can download them to your phone, your tablet, print them off from your PC, take them to your game, and have fun. So, until next time, thank you very much for watching.